Introduction Meena, it's lunch time and you are not eating. Is everything okay with you? No, I'm feeling too thick. I wish I could be a plant. A plant? Yes, because they don't have teeth for intaking nutrients for their growth. Yes, it's amazing. But I wonder, how do they do this? Yes, we will discuss this in detail. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Discuss about uptake of mineral ions Explain the translocation process of mineral ions Describe the phloem transport Describe the pressure flow or mass flow hypothesis Uptake of mineral ions Friends, as we all know that plants do not have teeth and digestive organs like us. They obtain their carbon and most of their oxygen from CO2 in the atmosphere. However, their remaining nutritional requirements are obtained from minerals and water for hydrogen in the soil. Let us first know how do they uptake mineral ions. Unlike water, all minerals cannot be passively absorbed by the roots. Two factors account for this minerals are present in the soil as charged particles or ions, which cannot move across cell membranes and the concentration of minerals in the soil is usually lower than the concentration of minerals in the root. Therefore, most minerals must enter the root by active absorption into the cytoplasm of epidermal cells. This needs energy in the form of ATP. The active uptake of ions is partly responsible for the water potential gradient in roots and therefore for the uptake of water by osmosis. Some ions also move into the epidermal cells passively. Do you know the fact that ions are absorbed from the soil by both passive and active transport? Specific proteins in the membranes of root hair cells actively pump ions from the soil into the cytoplasm of the epidermal cells. Like all cells, the endodermal cells have many transport proteins embedded in their plasma membrane. They let some solutes cross the membrane, but not others. Transport proteins of endodermal cells are control points where a plant adjusts the quantity and types of solutes that reach the xylem. Note that the root endodermis, because of the layer of submarine, has the ability to actively transport ions in one direction only. Translocation of mineral ions After the ions have reached xylem through active or passive uptake, or a combination of the two, their further transport up the stem to all parts of the plant is through the transpiration stream. The chief sinks for the mineral elements are the growing regions of the plant such as the apical and lateral meristems, long leaves, developing flowers, fruits and seeds and the storage organs. Mineral ions are frequently remobilized particularly from older senescing parts. Older dying leaves export much of their mineral content to younger leaves. Similarly, before leaf fall in deciduous plants, minerals are removed to other parts. Elements most readily mobilized are phosphorus, sulfur, nitrogen and potassium. Some elements that are structural components like calcium are not remobilized. So, the xylem transports only inorganic nutrients while Phloem transport only organic material. Phloem transport Now we will learn about phloem transport. Food, primarily sucrose, is transported by the vascular tissue phloem from a source to a sink. Usually the source is that part of the plant which synthesizes the food. The source and sink may be reversed depending on the season or the plant's needs. 
Sugar stored in roots may be mobilized to become a source of food in the early spring when the buds of trees act as sink. They need energy for growth and development of the photosynthetic apparatus. Since the source sink relationship is variable, the direction of movement in the phloem can be upwards or downwards, which means bi directional. This contrasts with that of the xylem, where the movement is always unidirectional which means upwards. Hence, unlike one-way flow of water in transpiration, food and phloem sap can be transported in any required direction, so long as there is a source of sugar and a sink able to use, store or remove the sugar. Phloem sap is mainly water and sucrose, but other sugars, hormones and amino acids are also transported or translocated through phloem. Pressure flow or mass flow hypothesis. Pressure flow or mass flow hypothesis is the accepted mechanism used for the translocation of sugars from source to sink. A glucose is prepared at the source by photosynthesis. It is converted to sucrose. The sugar is then moved in the form of sucrose into the companion cells and then into the living phloem sieve tube cells by active transport. This process of loading at the source produces a hypertonic condition in the phloem. Water in the adjacent xylem moves into the phloem by osmosis. An osmotic pressure builds up the phloem sap will move to area of lower pressure. At the sink, osmotic pressure must be reduced. Again, active transport is necessary to move the sucrose out of the phloem sap and into the cells which will use the sugar converting it into energy, starch or cellulose. As sugars are removed, the osmotic pressure decreases and water moves out of the phloem. Phloem tissue is composed of sieve tube cells which form long columns with holes in their end walls called sieve plates. Cytoplasmic strands pass through the holes in the sieve plates, so forming continuous filaments. As hydrostatic pressure in the phloem sieve tube increases, pressure flow begins and the sap moves through the phloem. Meanwhile, at the sink, incoming sugars are actively transported out of the phloem and removed as complex carbohydrates. The loss of solute produces a high water potential in the phloem and water passes out, returning eventually to xylem. A simple experiment called griddling was carried out to identify the tissues through which food is transported. On the trunk of a tree, a rink of bark up to a depth of the phloem layer can be carefully removed. In the absence of downward movement of food, the portion of the bark above the ring on the stem becomes swollen after a few weeks. This simple experiment shows that phloem is the tissue responsible for translocation of food and that transport takes place in one direction, which means towards the roots. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Most minerals must enter the root by active absorption into the cytoplasm of epidermal cells. This needs energy in the form of ATP. Ions are absorbed from the soil by both passive and active transport. Specific proteins in the membranes of root hair cells actively pump ions from the soil into the cytoplasm of the epidermal cells. Transport proteins of endodermal cells are control points where a plant adjusts the quantity and types of solutes that reach the xylem. After reaching the ions to xylem by actively or passively, the further transport the stem to all plant parts is through transpiration stream. The chief sinks for the mineral elements are the growing regions of the plant, such as the apical and lateral meristems, young leaves, developing flowers, fruits and seeds, and the storage organs. Elements most readily mobilized are phosphorus, sulfur, nitrogen and potassium. Food 
primarily sucrose, is transported by the vascular tissue phloem from a source to a sink. The source of synthesized food is the leaf, and sink is the part that needs or stores the food. The direction of movement in the phloem can be upwards or downwards, which is called bidirectional, whereas in xylem, the movement is always unidirectional, which means upwards. The accepted mechanism used for the translocation of sugars from source to sink is called the pressure flow hypothesis.